I'll show you a couple of more things and we'll let you go. Unless you have a question. Victor. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got I got I have to ask. In in about two thousand fourteen you played the, the Dakota. I'm sitting at the bar, it's like one or two songs into the set, and Prince floats by and makes his way quietly up to a table upstairs. I was hoping that you maybe could give us a, maybe a story or an anecdote of, of a time where you were you've met Prince or talked to him or with Prince. We're desperate for new Prince information in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fortunately, there are there is tons of Prince music that may or may not ever be heard. Um, but there's lots of good Prince stories. I was, we were listening to to uh, TJ TJ. Did I say it right? Yeah, on the car on the way here. You know, he had said he had a uh, extra role in the Graffiti Bridge movie. Um, but yeah, I do have French stories. Some of them are good and some of them are not. But they're all worth learning from. I, I was always told before I met Prince that if you meet Prince, it depends on which Prince you meet. <laughs> and um, the, my first meeting of Prince wasn't that joyful. I don't know why, um, but I still learned a lot from it. The next meeting was unbelievable. He invited my band, the band I had at the time, to play Paisley Park. I guess he was a Jehovah's Witness at the time and they didn't celebrate birthdays, but the week of his birthday, he had a big week-long party at Paisley Park. A celebration every night. So I went three of the nights, got to play one of the nights, and Prince's band would play after whoever played. So the first night, with Nora Jones, and you know, soft jazz and piano, and she had a band, really soft, mellow. Say again? Mellow. very mellow, but great. You know, she knew how to work dynamics within this range, Curtis Mayfield style. Never got here, but when she worked this, it was like just as much. Prince came out on a stool, acoustic guitar, and a microphone. Unbelievable. Unbelievable just to see that pure talent, not you know, mixed in with bass, drums, singers, dancers, just him, a voice, and a guitar. And even though I knew he was an unbelievably amazing musician, getting to sit there and watch that, it was like draw jump to know that he's really that good and he really. I will still say is that good. Amazing. So it was really, really nice to get to witness witness that. But at the same time, we were around and alive and musically aware of Prince when his first record came out. And I'm so happy that I got to see music change because of him. And I was alive and aware of that change when he came out. This young teenager playing all the instruments. So yeah, yeah, but you know, I'm, I've been married 28 years and I've had good meetings and bad meetings with my wife. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't make me love her or Prince or you any less because we have bad moments. That's what life is about, good and bad moments. If everything happened the way you wanted it to, you would be bored. You know? And the things that hurt us the most are the people who are the closest to us. So we love Prince so much that we want to know everything. And if you meet Prince and he treats you wrong, most people will just like be so heartbroken. I wasn't. I was, and I listened to everything he said, even though I disagreed. He was preaching to me, and I listened. He deserved me to listen. You know, it's Prince. I'm not going to not listen. And I listened, and I thanked him, even though I still disagree with what he was telling. It works for him, great. But then the next time I met Prince was at Paisley Park. Totally different Prince. He toured us around Paisley Park, showed us everything, make yourself at home, unbelievable. And that was when I finally got it. Ah, depends on which Prince you meet. But whichever one you meet, you can't deny what he did for me. And in my mind, to do what he did in that short of time, you gotta be a little crazy. <laughs> and to me, crazy doesn't mean bad. It just means you think differently than everyone else. So I love it.
something. You know, I wasn't at the Paisley Park show when my brothers uh, played for that birthday week of French music, but one thing that was cool, let's say uh, that his nickname was The Sponge, because he was always soaking up what everybody did. And uh, after Victor and them played, it wasn't mellow. <laughs> it was like super fun. And so Prince was planning to come out and play maybe some mellow piano, but he had to shift gears and he ended up calling his band to come in. And uh, they said that uh, Prince is, uh, started playing the guitar. He had played guitar for a few years, but he started, he, he pulled out his band and they did a real set where he played guitar and everything. So everybody was really excited about that. And he was really inspired by uh, what Reggie was doing on the guitar. He, he came backstage, asked to hold Reggie's guitar. He said, let me just touch your guitar. So there's a fun story. He said, man, can I just touch your guitar? Right? And then in the next day, Steve Park, uh, no, Vic's manager, uh, uh was at Paisley Park. Uh, uh, I think it was early in the morning, she was looking for coffee. And Prince was up watching the concert of what Vic and him had done the night before. And he was rewinding Reggie's part. He was just kept rewinding it. So there's a Prince story. He was really still, you know, very inspired by what was going on around him. Yep. Yeah, Prince was very open. Mm -hmm. Was there a question over here? You forgot? Okay.